Hello you lovely Mario Maker person, my name is Sief and welcome back. Combination locks are really useful in Super Mario Maker. They can be used to create additional checkpoints, to create puzzle levels where Mario needs to figure out the code or to create password systems which allow to carry information from one stage to another. We actually had a couple of designs featured on this channel before, but they all suffered from one of two problems. They were either super complicated to set up or really easy to brute force. So I sat down and tried to figure out the design for a combination lock which is easy to set up and somewhat secure. Today we're going to take a look at this design and how it works and we're going to talk about a stage using it, which features a couple of cool minigames as well. So are you ready? Let's do this! Okay, so this is what the lock looks like. Mario enters the numbers by bouncing his head against these brick blocks. The number of head bounces is the entered number and can be anything between 0 and 9. There are 12 head bounce spots here and only one of the 9 numbers is correct for each of them. This means there are exactly 1 trillion possible input states for this lock. Inputting one number takes about a minute since it takes some time until Mario bounces his head against all the brick blocks. This means it would take our plumber 1 trillion minutes to enter every single input into this lock once, which means it would take our plumber almost 2 million years to brute force it. But he could always download it and look it up. Setting this up with 12 numbers is definitely a bit excessive. Once Mario enters the last number, a piece which gets triggered and the exit opens up. Ok, so how does this work? It's actually surprisingly simple. Here I rebuilt the system with only 4 input digits. The combination here is 1, 2, 3, 4. The P switch at the end is triggered by the red Koopa at the top. The red Koopa isn't able to walk through the Goombas or the Munchers, but he's able to walk through the Boos. Whenever Mario jumps towards a brick block, one of the Goombas dies and drops down. Our plumber has to kill the right amount of Goombas in order to create a pathway for the red Koopa towards the P switch. If he kills a Goomba too much, the path becomes blocked. The whole system can be resetted by entering a door or a pipe. So let's take a look on a stage using this design. This stage is called Koopa's Combination Lock Cave. I uploaded this level, so if someone wants to play it, you can find the ID in the description. To Mario's right is the lock. This lock is a little bit less secure than the one shown before, as it only has 1 million different input states. There are 3 different pipes at the beginning of the stage here. Each pipe leads Mario to a different mini challenge, and if he survives there, he learns 2 numbers of the lock. In the first room, Mario has to survive on top of these bouncing bullet blaster platforms, while he also has to avoid the deadly saw blades. After a while, a hidden shell met timer expires, which grants Mario access to the first two numbers, 3 and 9. A cool thing about a stage like this is that Mario only needs to survive each minigame once, as he is able to note down the numbers he learned afterwards and never has to re-enter the minigame again, no matter how often he dies. Ok, so far Mario knows 2 of the 6 required numbers. The next 2 numbers can be learned by surviving this minigame. Here our plumber has to bounce around while the bullet blaster to his left shoots dangerous bullet bills towards him. At the top are 4 shellmet timers. Whenever one of these timers expires, a bullet blaster drops down and the challenge becomes harder for Mario. The last shellmet timer is connected to a power block and once this one is triggered, the exit opens up and Mario is able to learn the next two numbers. 5 and 3. The last minigame is a dangerous wall jump challenge. These bullet blasters move horizontally. The floor is made out of shiny but deadly coins, so Mario's only chance to survive here is by wall jumping between the dangerous blaster walls. To make matters worse, there are horrible saw blades which kill Mario if he isn't careful. Luckily, after a while, a track trigger triggers a P-switch, which magically transforms the coins into brick blocks. Hooray! Now Mario is able to learn the last two numbers. 0 and 7. So the code is 395307. While we watch Mario input the solution, let's quickly talk about some other ways to use combination locks. Something that's interesting about these locks is that they allow to store information over several stages. For example, Mario could learn a specific password if he found a secret room in stage A and this password could grant him a fire flower at the start of stage B. Or it could be used to store earned experience between different RPG levels. Or if you really want to annoy your players and Mario, you could create a math stage where Mario has to solve, 
I don't know. A simple multiplication or some equations or a curve sketching where the x and y position of the turning point is the solution. I'd totally play such a stage. And there are probably tons of other ways to use something like this. So if you have a cool idea, let me know it. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this little video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave me a thumbs up and maybe you feel especially combination lock today and want to hit the subscribe button as well. I hope you have a wonderful day and to see you soon. Goodbye!